Now you might think that borders are a thing of the past relegated to the late 90s, early 2000s, but that's simply not the case. I'm gonna show you and give you a masterclass all about borders in terms of modern UI design things to avoid and also things that you can definitely do, both low contrast and even high contrast borders. So as always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. And you know what? Let's get started. Now, just wait one moment. If you're interested in this video, then you might be interested in my UI design bootcamp at scrimba.com. At scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, no, no. You're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So make sure to click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get access to my bootcamp along with many other courses for a very low monthly fee. All right, so imagine you have this design in front of you. I, it's ugly. And now for those of you with an untrained eye, you might not be sure exactly what is causing this issue. And I'm telling you right now, the issue is, these high contrast borders. When we take those away, it's gonna look a thousand times better. But I'm also gonna show you, of course, how to use borders uh, in this type of design um, and along with another design as well. So if we take this right here, this is the main component and I simply double click into here and we hide or remove these borders here, gotta do on this one as well. You can see just how much better it looks. Now, before I do that, actually, let me go back here real quick. I want to, just so we have a reference point, I'm just gonna go into screenshot this. We're gonna paste it over here. Now we, we can see a quick and easy before and after just to show the difference because it is a big difference. All right, so we'll take this once again, get rid of that. Oops, that's the wrong one. There we go. Uh, we'll get rid of that and then we will also get rid of this right here. All right, so as you can see, if we compare these two designs side by side, this one looks just a lot more pleasing. Why is that? Well, it's because this right here, this border, these borders are high contrast borders and it directs, it demands a lot of attention from the eye, all right? And it, they're not important. Like, why would you have these high contrast borders here? They're completely unnecessary. And plus there's quite a few of them, you know? So it really clutters the design. So how could we use actual borders? All right, so in my opinion, if you have a background color, like on these cards, for instance, there's no use in having a border. Like you could add a border, but it has to be very low contrast. So let, let's try that. So I'm gonna double click into here. We're gonna add a stroke and we are going to, and even black, like black is not as bad as white because it's not contrasting as much because these are darker colors in which it's sitting um, and they're adjacent to. Uh, but let's make it even closer to this view and maybe we can even bold it up uh, a little bit more. So we're gonna give it uh, three for the size and then for the actual color, let's just grab the color it's sitting on and then we can go a little bit darker or you could go a little bit lighter. I personally like the darker look because it gives a sort of a, a, bit, a bit of a transition to the darker background and you could see them right here. So you could completely use this aesthetic. Uh, it's completely fine, it looks fine to me, and it works well. It's not high contrast. Now, what if we wanted to get rid of the background from, from these cards? All right, let's do that. So what I'll do is come out here, get rid of the fill, and hey, guess what? Those don't even look that bad. But before we get to that part, what I wanna do is, if I could double click into here, let me get that, there we go. Uh, and we get rid of the, the um, stroke. I just more, real quickly wanted to show you that you don't, you completely don't even need borders at all. Uh, you don't need card backgrounds. The only thing I would change now because the alignment is thrown off. So if I hit uh, Shift R, we'll see the logo creates kind of like this, this beginning of a column and having them indented like this just doesn't look good. So what I would do is move these over or better yet, if I just take these uh, and just kind of, oops. Trying to move these without screwing things up too much. Oh, that's just one element, that's why. There we go. We move these over. And then we move these over as well. That looks a lot better. And then of course, do the same thing with this. 
and all of a sudden, and if I get rid of the ruler, this works too. You could completely do this. It's fine. There's no uh, objective requirement that you have to have a background for these cards. They're separated enough with white space that it's okay. All right, so I think what I'll do is we're gonna move this over and once again, we will copy this, paste that over here, just so we can give, uh, at the end, we'll look at all the different ways that we can approach this design. Of course, this one's really bad. We don't want that, but we'll use that as a reference point. All right, so this one, coming back to this, um, assuming, of course, you know, we want to give it a border. So what we'll do is just add this um, right here. We'll move these over, kind of back to around where they were. And let's get in here and get our rectangle. And let's add a stroke or a border. I call them borders, but same thing. Um, so what we want to do, if you want to use a border in this context, we do not do this. That just takes too much focus and emphasis away from the text and the call to action and everything. It clutters it because there's a lot of them as well. There's three of these things and it just adds way too much clutter. So what we wanna do instead is low contrast it. So the, one of the best ways to do this, just take the background in which it's sitting on, the color, and then we can just push this up a bit. You could probably go as high as this. I wanna go much higher than, I wanna go up to here but just down here on the lower portion, somewhere under like 40% of this, this vertical point. And notice we're also using some of the hue, but not all. If you bring too much of the color saturation in, it just doesn't look good. So you wanna tone it, which means add gray, and you wanna add shade, which means make it darker. And this is perfectly fine right here. This looks actually really good in my opinion. So we have a, um, come down here if I can find, there we go, it is rectangle eight. Uh, if I add that same stroke, now this is all moved over and get this back up and running. And there we go. That looks really good in my opinion. So we can see we have a few different options. If I um, also will replicate this one more time and then I will Let's do an option where it just has no border. Um, yeah, let me let me just copy this real quick. So this is our no border option, or our border option rather, and then we'll get a border list option with a card background so that we cover all of our bases. So now we go back here, get rid of that. Um, and we'll give it a, a background, the panel, an actual background color. So we add a fill here, and we'll do that trick that we learned. Get the background color. We can we could call we can go darker. Let's just go darker for the fun of it. So we'll copy that color code, and then get to this. Get rid of that. Add the fill, and there we go. All right. So looking at all these, this is the no-no. This just doesn't look good at all. Here's ultra simple. Here's one with uh, nice borders. I actually like this more than this one because it helps give structure. So borders obviously have their place. And then here's another option. The difference between this here and this here is, is quite subjective. Uh, this has a higher, you know, the cards are more defined because they're all filled in and they're not just relying on a one pixel border. Um, but you know, to a large degree, these are both going to perform pretty much the same. Now, let's take a, a, an example here to show where and how you could use potentially a high contrast border. All right, so we have this design. This is a design from a previous tutorial. Um, if I take the line and we create like a line separator between these two areas, it is completely fine to use a high contrast border in this context. It doesn't really take very much away from what's happening because there's not a bunch of borders. Like I'm not adding borders on over everything. So this can help kind of structure a layout into two clearly defined columns or three if you count this over here. And it's completely fine in this regard. I, what would be excessive is if I duplicated this for instance and we uh, rotated it around and maybe we tried to put a border like underneath this and then right over here like 
we start adding borders all over the place and it's gonna quickly, high contrast borders that is, it's gonna quickly look like garbage. But if you use high contrast borders sparingly, they can be a benefit. Uh, of course, you don't have to use a high contrast border here. We could take this down to like 10%, I'm sure. And we still have a very subtle difference in the columns. That's completely fine as well. All right, so hopefully you guys learned uh, just about borders today and kind of just good use cases in terms of how to use them. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to subscribe. Check out designcourse.com, which if you're watching this, the time of release, it's, uh, the pre-launch is here at September 14th. Definitely go to designcourse.com, enter your email to be notified when that happens. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye. <laughs>